been about two weeks since I updated you guys with any videos from this project because it's been hectic here. I haven't had a chance to really record, so what I've been doing is releasing some YouTube shorts. YouTube's been telling me to do this. For some reason, they want to be TikTok and they don't want to be YouTube. So I'm playing the game, re-releasing a lot of my old stuff. So there's a lot of new subscribers that are actually come to the channel. So welcome aboard. Thanks for being with us. And I'm going to show you guys some really cool details today because check it out. We're in this formal living room. This is done in the Georgian style. And if you've been following this whole project, you know, this is my absolute favorite room in this whole house. Just, just breathtaking, stunning stuff going on here. But what's interesting about this is as ornate as this is in this room on the exact other side of this room, you get the most simple detail that is almost the opposite of what you see in here. Allow me to introduce you guys to the pencil casing. This is a really awesome piece. I was almost just as impressed by this when I came through that door for the first time as I was by this. It is a really awesome, fun detail. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install it in this video. So like I said, guys, you go from this really heavy, ornate Georgian style molding and on the other side, you've got this subtle little pencil detail. Now, a couple things I wanna point out to you as far as our install goes. If you look at the pencil, now I'll admit first when I saw this, I thought it was just a dowel, like a big wooden dowel just nailed into the casing and it essentially is, but you saw the profile of it, it's not exactly. But one thing I wanna point out is notice our jam here. Now our jam, it, it's still got a big reveal. That's actually a 3 8 reveal right there. Our pencil is an inch and an eighth. And then on this side with the plaster, it's flush with the plaster. So you see that? So no reveal here. And then we have a 3 8 reveal here. So we're gonna recreate that on our jam over here where I'm gonna show you guys. We've got actual drywall, this is original plaster but that's kind of all the same thing. So here's the opening. I'm gonna be showing you guys trimming out with this pencil detail. Pretty basic uh, opening here. It's got drywall corner bead edges, which is very important because as I mentioned, the drywall or plaster is a finished surface. So those need to be good to go. And since the drywall is a finished surface, there is no shimming a detail like this. So you just follow the outside corners of the drywall, you follow the jam itself. And if this thing right here isn't plumb, well, I mean, so be it, we have to go with it. Because if you shim it out, you're gonna change the reveal of that pencil and it's just not gonna look good overall. So let's go ahead and get started. So because I want this pencil molding to finish flush with the outside face of my drywall here, I need to determine where my finished jam needs to stop. And to figure that out, I need to figure out how wide this molding is or how thick rather. And this is an inch and an eighth thick. So I can simply take and set a reveal and mark an inch and an eighth, which I already have this set up for. So I can mark it with my pencil all the way down this side. And since we're gonna have pencil on this side of the jam as well, I'll mark it on that side too. Take our pencil and our reveal and just drag that down. And I'm going to do this to the whole jam both legs and the header. So I'm gonna be making my jams out of true three quarter inch Windsor one boards. Those are gonna be installed right there on that pencil line. And if I grab the pencil molding, we already know we're flush here, but the problem we have, if we just install this directly to the drywall, we have no reveal here. We actually have this pencil sticking out proud of the jam, which doesn't look good and it's not what we want. We need this to have a reveal, like I showed you on that original, in the beginning of the video. So we need this whole thing to block out and have a final width or thickness rather of an inch and a quarter. So if our Windsor board is a true three quarter, we need to bring in a half inch blocking to bring it out to an inch and a quarter. So three quarters plus half inch is gonna give us the proper reveal. Now, these pieces here are just off cuts of scrap plywood that I've ripped to half inch. So half inch, three quarter, it's going to give us that inch and a quarter. We put our pencil molding in the proper place. We've got flushness here. We've got our proper reveal here and it's as simple as that. So what I need to do before I do anything, I need to take my strips of plywood that I ripped down and install them 
right on this pencil line to give me the proper blocking out for the proper reveal. So now what we need to do, the next step in this whole deal, is gonna to be to take our tape measure and get some readings off these. So I've got four and 13 sixteenths right there. I'm gonna go around and see if this thing is pretty consistent as far as width when I pull the tape from block to block. And after that, this is gonna be basically a really simple jam. So you guys have seen me build jams on this channel before. That's all we're gonna do, so I'm not gonna go too deep into detail on that. So let's go ahead and jam this thing out. Now that we have our jam installed, we can go ahead and move on to the pencil installation. And this is really, really easy. It's almost easier than casing a door. It's a very small molding. There's no reveal to set. Like on a typical door casing, you have to set it a quarter inch off. You don't have to do that. You've created a 90 degree between your jam and your drywall where that 90 degree of that pencil molding is gonna fit right in that spot there. It's gonna rest right there. Easy install, good to go. Now there's one other part of this that is very, very difficult. Probably one of the hardest things I've done in carpentry, but we've simplified it and it's the tie-in at the base. So I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, it's very unique. It's like nothing I've seen before, but it looks really cool. So let me go ahead and trim this out with the pencil. We'll get the easy part done and we'll see this tie-in down here. As a matter of fact, I'll show you guys the original. I should have thought of this before trying to explain it, but this will give you a view of what I'm trying to accomplish. So here's the pencil, easy. It's gonna sit on top of this base. So this is a five inch block. It's got this cap here. And the really interesting part about this is that cap, it makes this turn, but since this is a circle, that has to cope around it. So very difficult cut to make, but I've got a way of doing it that really works out. And I'm gonna share that with you because you've never seen coping like this before. At least I haven't, and I doubt a lot of people have. So we're gonna look at this. This is gonna be getting down to the nitty gritty of some carpentry stuff. And if you're here on this channel, I figure you kind of like that stuff. So let me get that pencil installed. You can see my pencil line right there on my pencil. And uh, when I cut my casings, I like to cut them to where I'm cutting the back side of the profile is towards me. So there's a back of our profile right there. And I just line that up with my shadow line. So we have our three pieces of casing cut. I'm gonna start with my header here, just as a dry fit before we uh, put any glue or nails. And then I'll bring you guys up close after I install this and show you how everything looks. So there we go, I like that. Nice, tight fit. So the way I'm gonna install this, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one in. So that one will be set in place and I'll do that while these are kind of holding it up. That way I know it's exactly in the position that it needs to be, you know, between the other two pieces when they go to match up. And then for installing these, I'm just gonna put glue on the miters, push them up into place, and then blast them with some 15 gauge finish nails. Now, one inch thick piece, I'm using two and a half inch nails, going through that piece, through the drywall, into the framing, really getting a bite on that and just making this a solid install. Check it out guys, we've got our pencil casing installed. Really basic install down there, but a really interesting look.
All right, that looks good. So we've got our base installed, that's good to go. Cap is easy to install, it just sits right on top and gets coped and mitered at the necessary areas. So one of those areas is gonna be right here, that hard part where it wraps around this pencil. So it needs to cope out and hug around that. That's very difficult, but I've got a way that is really gonna simplify it. Let me explain it to you. So if you remember earlier, I said this pencil molding was an inch and an eighth thick. Well, that's also including the little you know, 90 degree profile that's on the back side where it allows it to sit in that perfect position. The circle itself is only one inch. So we got to thinking and we said, hey, why don't we go get a Forstner bit, a one inch Forstner bit that'll allow us to easily cope that same shape out and allow that cap to hug around that. And that's exactly what we did. So check that out. That is drilled out with the Forstner bit. So when I put this in position, it just hugs around that just like a dream. And you can see that joint there. I mean, that's about as tight as you're gonna get it. And you can see it wraps back in there and it looks really good. So with this in this position, I can just take my pencil and mark the back side here and that'll tell me exactly where I need to cut that. So really a difficult cut simplified by just using a simple tool that's as easy as drilling a hole. So I've got this one right here, but I'll show you guys how to actually do it on a new piece. So let's go check it out. So we got our piece of molding here and we're gonna drill a Forstner bit going straight down, but I can't really just go straight in like this. I've gotta start on this circle and then kind of come up to plumb. That's because when you're using a Forstner bit, you gotta have a starting point in the center there. So there's something for that to kind of guide you through the whole process. So I've got a quarter inch here on this top profile. I'm looking to leave about an eighth of an inch left over from that. So what I found with doing this is that I can get pretty close, but usually I'd have to take it to the miter saw and cut a little bit more off of this. So let me show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and try to eyeball one of these real quick. Um, Kind of move this around until I feel like I got the right location. That should do it. So I'll start, then come up to plumb. All right and you can see what it really needs to be on that piece I showed you earlier. So what I need to do is I need to take this to the miter saw and just clean that up. And that's what I was talking about because as close as I need this profile of circle to be to that pencil, I need to trim some of this excess off. So you can see it would be about right there. I need to cut all that off. So let's see how we did on this first attempt. First attempt on camera at least. Hey, check that out. We got a nice tight cope there. I mean, one of the most difficult copes, literally turning into the easiest cope ever. As easy as drilling a hole. I mean, that's, that's insane. So pretty cool there, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, not much more to it. We're drilling a hole to get this to wrap around. It's nice and level with the pencil. The pencil is plumb right there. So yeah, that is within tolerance. So we can move forward with this. So let me go ahead and uh, mark off for these and we can get these two pieces installed. So we'll do a little dry fit and see if these were, oh man, <laughs> that. Looks freaking good. All right, let's glue it and shoot it. So for this one, we are going to do CA glue since it's such a small piece. Oh man, that, that's satisfying 
to see that go in. All right, so we'll fit that in place and then we can shoot it. Check it out, guys. That is just too cool. I mean, if you're not nerding out right now, I mean, wake up. What's wrong with you? This is just some interesting, really cool stuff as far as trim carpentry. Pencil coming down, cap coping into that. I mean, transitioning this base into this jam like that. I've never seen anything like that. And here's a look at what we just did, obviously. And let's walk on over and look at the original. I'd say we did it. And it's an exact replica, really awesome. Uh, I wonder how those guys did it in 1928. It'd be really cool to uh, talk to them and ask them, but obviously they're probably all passed on now. Um, you know, too bad YouTube wasn't around. They could have documented it as well, which is why I like to make these videos, just kind of document these really interesting things and share them with those who are interested not only for myself to look back and see progression and kind of remember the interesting jobs that we've done, but also for future generations. As crazy as that sounds, it's just cool to think like maybe one day some carpentry kid, like a young me, could look at this and get inspired. I don't know, I actually really do think about that. I think it would be cool. So check this out. You thought pencil was cool. What about arched pencil? Look at this, the front door, guys. How in the world do you think they did that? I want to say steam box. They definitely had steam box back then. Or maybe they just made it um, from a solid piece and cut it on a bandsaw and just, you know, made that circular shape out of it, which is another option. I don't think it's a uh, flex mold though. Nope, definitely not rubber. <laughs> Now I know I said in the beginning of this video that this is kind of an ornate room with these Georgian moldings and the pencil on the other side is just really simple. But check this out, the pencil made an appearance on this whole mantle build out. They used it right here on the corner, just in my opinion to soften that edge just so it's not so blocky. So I never knew about this molding before, but it definitely changed my mind and my perception on moldings. I could definitely see myself using a profile like this on my house when I ever get back to working on that thing. Let's go ahead and pull this. All this is pretty much done. I hadn't seen this thing in a long time. Oh man. <laughs> wow. This mantle is just breathtaking. I remember coming in here the first day and just being in total all of this thing and nothing's changed since then and not seeing it for a while it just it's kind of like seeing it again for the first time because it's been covered up behind that plastic but now that things are kind of cleaning out in this room i think the painters are headed in, headed in here next and they're gonna tighten this place up and make it look brand new and they've done some really amazing work on the upstairs i'll show you guys that um, but just looking at this and thinking of my progression personally, like I had no idea what any of this stuff was called. And now I know about what 10% of it. So I know this little detail right here where this bumps out is called a cross headed corner. And I've done one of those, did it in my garage on the entry door that goes into my house. So that's a fun detail. It's also called an eared architrave. If you're on the other side of the pond. That's what I learned as well. And then also this up here, this is kind of the showpiece of this whole mantle. I mean, really this whole thing is a showpiece, this insane carving right here. Uh, but that up there is kind of the, um, the finishing touch and that's called a broken pediment. So it's broken because the pediment doesn't meet. Uh, had it kept going up and met, it would create this shape, which is a rooftop, like a gable, and that's Greek revival stuff. So the Greek temples, they all had that pediment on top of them. And then people would do broken pediments, and then people would do reverse broken pediments. I learned that from Brent. Like, watching one of his videos, he showed Michelangelo did a reversed broken pediment. I'll show you a picture of that. Absolutely insane. 
So the reason I love carpentry and the reason I get so excited about this stuff is because this thing, you can take it as far as you want to take it. I mean, it's, it's that deep of a trade, you know, and I'm sure other trades get that deep tile flooring, all these crafts just, they just light a fire inside of me because it's not just taking something basic and, you know, oh, just slap it in and get it done and get paid. This is something cool where you actually get to get crafty and make something with your hands that someone maybe even a hundred years from now can appreciate like I'm doing right here today. So something to think about. I don't know. I'm just ranting now, but these painters are moving in here next. That's why I removed this plastic. They're going to be, you know, doing all their prep work, fixing all of our stuff where we installed some of these moldings if you caught the last video, but these guys are good. I'm gonna take you upstairs and show you one of the rooms that they finished. I had my doubts, like I do painting too, as many of you know, I'm not painting anything here, but I do my own painting for my typical customers. And I saw that room and I saw all the imperfections on the paneling, it's like a French paneling design. And I was like, that's, uh, that's gonna be rough. I hope they can do it. So I'd, I'd kind of look in there cause we were working up there. And I'd be like, I, I don't know, you know, I hope they can do it. Well, sure enough, they, <laughs> they pull the plastic on the last day they're in there. And I'm like, what, how did, how did you do it? I mean, they were in there for a week straight, patching, sanding, patching, sanding, body filling, Bondo, just with lights, looking at it from every angle. I'm like, okay, you've, you've ridded me of all my doubts. Like this house is gonna look spectacular they're gonna make us look so good <laughs> i can't wait to walk through and show you guys the entablature when it's done all the other stuff that i haven't had time to record it's gonna be a cool walk through so anyways let's let's go look at that that french room oh they're even moving in here this is the uh gum room so this whole room is made out of gum wood and that's original Brent built some uh, gum doors to match and it looks like they are working on this ceiling here. Nice. That detail right there, I talked about it in the first video at this house. We got to replicate that as well. I did not have time to record it. I take that back. I actually did record the process of replicating this, this curved skirt board right here, which we did on the other side in the kitchen but it was done with my iPhone. It's a seven year old phone. And as you can imagine, the quality is really bad, but I will share that with you eventually. Uh, we will fit that in somehow because we still got to make the cap. All I've got right now is the curved skirt board. I don't have a cap, so we really need to make that cap. <laughs> we got to figure that out. I'm thinking cutting it out on a bandsaw and then, you know, routing that shape into it like I thought they did for that pencil down there. So just tossing that idea around, I definitely don't want to steam box wood in that position against the grain like that. But if you have any way you can think of where I can bend a piece of wood that's that thick, let me know, leave it in the comments. But more than likely, I'll make it a custom piece at the bandsaw and with the router. So coming through here, there's two little vestibule cabinets in this master area that we did but we installed them, we didn't make them. Uh, we trimmed those out. Uh, we did this little paneling in here in the master bath. So there'll be a light, uh, mirror light and mirror light. We trimmed that window, did this paneling and it kind of wraps around the whole room. These are um, doors made out of sapili and uh, poplar. So they're paint grade. Uh, they use sapili for their styles and rails. And you can see that paneling just wraps around there. So as we go into here, it's going to be dark. There's no light in here, but yeah, this is, there's a five piece crown we did. Uh, I talked about that briefly. Let me see if I can raise up this digital light. No, it doesn't look good, but there it is. It's a five piece crown. It's got a, little simulated drip edge. I showed you guys that in the last video. 
Um, but yeah, coming in here, here's that French room I was talking about. We'll turn the digital light down, but check this out. Look at these French moldings. This is a really cool layout. They did this little swirly detail right here, which I know my wife would absolutely love. She wants me to do all that stuff to our house. But I'm like, how much, how much curves do you really want? So we'll have to make some agreement on how many little things like that we put in our house. But yeah, we've got French moldings, really thick pieces just laid out in a fun way. There's a lot of natural light in this room, especially when the sun is setting, it faces west this way towards the golf course. Uh, this one has an ellipse ceiling, just like the room we did that entablature in. It's just really cool architectural details. Makes this space feel a whole lot bigger than if it just was a flat ceiling. And I'm not a fan of vaulted ceilings, but I really like these ellipse ceilings. And I think the reason I'm not a fan of vaulted ceilings is because people always call us to put crown on them. And I'm like, oh, we can do it on some of them. Some of them we can't. And we can only do it with some crowns. But yeah, I'm just not a fan. Um, I don't think we would crown any lip ceiling either. But maybe we might try it. We definitely get a flex for that. I'm not, <laughs> not going to make a piece that big. Or I, I don't know. But yeah, this is amazing work by the painters. The sheen, everything just looks so good. Uh, I'm just blown away. So if these are the guys that are following us, I mean, we're, they're going to make us look good. And, and we're going to try our best to make their job as easy as possible by giving them that tight joinery like we did on that piece today. And then real quick, as we leave, we'll go back into this master bath. I want to show you guys this. In the shower area, there's this giant window. And this window is really the landmark feature of this house. Really that whole front gable that's got all those curbs. It's what everyone knows this house by in the area. And it's the definitive piece of the house. But that's looking at it from the inside of the house out. I'll show you what it looks like from the street and from the air with my drone. But that's a really cool feature that I thought you guys might like to see. So there'll be a really nice shower in here. This thing's coming together nicely. And uh, yeah, we didn't really have a whole lot to do in here. I installed this little linen cabinet, but that's about it. So there you have it guys. That's going to wrap it up for me on this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you saw something you never seen. I know I never seen anything like this until yesterday when I learned how to do it. Me and John figured it out literally yesterday. And I was like, I got to make a video on that and share it with those guys because I know you guys would appreciate it. So let me know if you did down in the comment section below. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. As always, thanks for watching. We're kind of seeing the sunset on this job. We've got about two more weeks here, maybe three. So we'll have some more stuff coming out of here a little bit more, but I've got some really cool stuff at my house, my personal house that we need to get around to like painting it like I eventually wanted to, but never got around to it because we've been here. And then I also bought a Makita refrigerator. That's really interesting. You're going to want to see that so anyways a lot of new subscribers if you're new around here thank you thank you for subscribing if you're old around here hey you know you're you're a repeat offender thank you too i really do appreciate it but other than that guys i'm going to end it here and i'll catch you on the next video